hi welcome back to my youtube channel and welcome to my youtube channel if this is your first time watching in today's video i want to speak about what love really is you know there are a lot of myths about love and what we portray love to mean it is generally said that love alone can keep a relationship which is love alone cannot make a relationship succeed or work out but then i can say that love if you really understand what it is can motivate good actions in a relationship in which that relationship can thrive through those good actions you know i grew up hearing things like love is blind love is wicked these things can really make the idea or perception about love vague because it's generally believed by a lot of people as a child of god i want to learn from the bible what to believe about love and i found a scripture that said that love abhors that which is evil and cleaves to that which is good and i held on to that because i use that to define everything about love in a relationship that i go into if i say that i love someone then i should cleave to only that which is good so what is this idea about love is blind it is used to say that people do not see faults or errors in the people that they love which means whatever those people get to do they will be kind of you know acting foolish or dumb loving people not even seeing their faults their mistakes or the errors in that relationship in the real sense of it if you want to define love as a child of god as a believer according to the bible love cannot be blind the fact that people might overlook issues and not want to deal with it and still move into a relationship there are a lot of things that could be called love that is not love people when they have feelings towards someone they just call it love they don't try to define that feeling if it's just an admiration it's just like a young person crushing over someone that they like or they think they love the person immediately feels like if i have a relationship with this person because i feel something strongly for them they feel like the relationship will work because they have a strong attraction or feeling to them and that's what most times people call love it is about this outrageous obsessive attraction that when they feel it they feel like if i have something to do with this person it's going to work out it's going to be the best but the truth is many of them have come to that and find out that it does not work out the way they think so people call obsession love they call attraction and attachment love they call a connection they feel with someone love and there are a lot of other things that people term love they even call lost love and even infatuation which means you just caught a feeling for someone and in that line you're like i love this person because you caught a feeling in first peter 4 verse 8 it says above all love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sin as a believer you should understand that you need this kind of love in your relationship and unconditional love because this love can cover a multitude of sin why am i bringing this here it's because love is not actually blind love can see but what it does is it can cover those multitude of sin it doesn't mean that it overlooks or avoid it it covers it means that it has dealt with it you talk about the issue if you see an issue if you see a fault you talk about it and see if there could be a change you don't just assume that this person will never change or this how they will ever be so you might get to talk to them to get to know them better with that you can't say that love is blind because in the line of love is blind a lot of people love someone they know is wrong for them and they still go ahead with it but real love or true love actually loves someone who is good for them not someone who is wrong a blind love is actually a broken love it cannot be a real love real love comes out authentic and also real love cannot be wicked because if it is wicked it cannot be godly so what does love really look like love is patient love is kind it does not envy it does not boast it is not proud it does not dishonor others it is not self-seeking it is not easily angered it keeps no record of wrongs love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth it always protects always trusts always hopes always perseveres we could see this as some high standard that we can attend but this is what the bible calls if you want to love this is what it looks like it is the god kind of love real love is not actually based on the erotic love which is the feeling part or the attraction only real love has to put to consideration every authentic part of you as a human being because you're not going to just always be attracted to the person two four seven seven days a week as the case may be you will need to see the person for who they are for real so when you really get to know this person if you were just based on attraction when the attraction fades away what will you do so that is where love comes to have this definition and if you check all of this list of what the bible says about what love is it is not based on feeling because patience 
is not a feeling. Neither is kindness a feeling. It is an action. And which makes me say that love is not just about a feeling. You could be attracted to someone through a feeling, but then you should advance from there and grow to the point of knowing this person and choosing to do things. Because love will actually make you do things. Let me summarize these points about love. Love is patient. And the truth is, patience is not pleasurable, but it's actually profitable. Nobody ever feels good being patient. In our human nature, we are naturally impatient. We just want to get things the way we want, the time we want immediately. That's why we love fast food, because we don't want to take time to go through the process. But the Bible says love is patient, which means when you get to meet someone, you won't rush the process. You want to take time. Your feelings want you to rush the process let's just go ahead and just do everything at once but patience will tell you take time and know this person if love is patient and then you go to meet someone and you say that you love them then that patience should be exercised from the first point of starting the relationship to the point of being in the relationship because it's not just about starting it it's about while you are in it whether it's a love relationship in dating or in marriage, when you pursue this person to have them, while you are in it, love is patient, which means they're going to offend you and do things that will make you want to lose your cool. That is where your love will be tested. Love is kind. So kindness is not about niceness. You know, every person who meets someone for the first time, you know, you want to give them the first impression with the good smiley face, all nice kind of personality. But the truth is, love is not just about the niceness. It's about kindness. It wants to be helpful. It wants to be of help to the person to whom it loves. And it further says, love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. I want to summarize this using this term. I actually picked it from this West Life song that says, us against the world. So when you commit to love and understand that it's you and the person you love against the world, the world actually is the world around you. The world on your inside, your anger, your pride, your selfishness, and every other thing, the trauma that you grew up seeing, you need to grow and learn because it takes you growing and learning for you to be able to actually fight for each other, not against each other. The truth is, the outside element in the relationship or anybody that would cast stones cannot really have a lure in your relationship if the inside is fortified. If both of you are mutual in your love and each person is learning and growing and working, then whatsoever would hit you on the outside would not be able to break that bond that has been created on the inside. So it's us against the world, you and the one you love standing tall. The unity of you two against the individualism, your individual selves. Because if we read through this portion, it says that love is not selfish, it's not proud. And and if you check all of these things, these things have to do with self, with an individual, which is your natural self that tries to fight things. It is not natural to be patient. It is not natural to be selfless. So when you say us against the world, it means the unity of us together against my selfishness, against my impatience, against my pride and my ego. Because sometimes those pride and the ego could come up when there are issues and everybody wants to be right. Nobody really wants to see where they were wrong. Love is not proud. So if it's not proud, it should be humble. Love does not dishonor. It is not selfish. It is not easily angered. So a lot of people could say, little things make me angry. Small things make me angry. But the truth is, if it is real love, it should not be easily angered. It's not a natural thing, which is love will make you do things if it is real. True love is not blind. It has eyes that can see. It is not evil or wicked because it actually hates evil and cleaves to that which is good. True love is not foolish. It is very wise and intentional. It has a purpose, it has an aim, and it has a direction to which it is going. And unconditional love is not something you can arrive at in a day. It is a work of progress, which is you are a work in progress. You keep growing into more and more of that unconditional love with someone if you really love them. And this is what love really looks like. I hope this video has been beneficial to you and you've learned something from this video. Let me know in the comment section what you've picked from this video and what you think love really is. And if you are so bold, I would like to hear about your experiences about love. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.